All right. Hello, ladies. This is our paint and mingle for the Cedar Trails neighborhood, um, my own sacred grove um, that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is hosting for Relief Society. And we're going to do a little quick video for this paint project. Uh, this is our painting that we're going to attempt to try and paint. Um, I've painted it a couple of times and every time it's come out a little differently, but this is what we're going to try and do. So here we go. Now I have a smaller canvas uh, today because I am out of 11 by 14s, but you should have an 11 by 14 uh, canvas that you can paint on. You'll also be given um, some paint brushes. These three here, we've got a sponge brush and a flat uh, quarter inch brush that we'll use quite a bit. This little guy, we may or may not use him, but he's there just in case. And you also have uh, several little containers of paint. Now we have about six colors that we're going to use today. So we're going to be mixing a lot of colors to make the colors for our sacred growth picture. So let's get started. If you have never painted before, this might be a little bit tricky, but I'll try and keep it as simple as possible. We're going to start off with our supplies. You should also have um, quite a few paper towels on hand and a cup of water or two or be kind of near a sink so you can rinse your sponge brush out because we will use it quite a bit for many different things in this painting. Um, so if you have a sponge brush, it's dry, but I want you to notice the shape of it. It's going to come to a point on two sides, kind of like a triangle, and you will use all, all sides of it today. So I'm going to go ahead and get my sponge brush just a little damp so that it spreads pretty good on my canvas. And we're going to start off by just dipping a little, pulling a little bit of brown and just a teensy bit of black just to make a little bit darker of a brown and kind of load up that uh, sponge brush. Okay, so we are going to start by making kind of X patterns. If it's not coming out very good, get some more water. We're going to start making some X patterns and we're just going to paint a background. It can be kind of watery, it can be a little thicker, it doesn't matter. See how I'm just going back and forth with my with my paint. And we're just going to kind of cover this bottom third. There's no need to be fancy with it. You're just going to want to smush it on there and kind of blend. Just a crisscross, it's kind of like using your wrist back and forth and back and forth. The water helps it spread and blend a little better. So now that I've got this kind of bottom third kind of of our canvas, I'm going to put a little bit more water on this brush. This water is going to get real brown and kind of dab it out so it's not super drippy. And I'm going to want to pull some of this side, the sides up a little bit lighter. and then kind of smooth it out. It looks like we're just making a mess and we kind of are, but this is the background. You're gonna use the flat side of your brush now and you're just gonna kind of go back and forth in a zigzag pattern down to the bottom of your canvas to kind of smooth it and blend it together. And that's that part. So now we're gonna start on our sky. Because I don't have a sink with me, I'm just going to switch out my sponge brush here. 
but we are going to take another sponge brush or clean yours out get it a little bit wet and we're going to take a tiny bit of our blue and mix it with some white we don't want it super super blue we want just to make a really really pale light blue and this is our background of our sky we're not going to see very much of it so we're just going to make it real real light you don't have to cover the whole back of your the whole back of your canvas because it's just going to show through you can be as thorough or as you know sloppy as you want to I'm just gonna do a little bit so it puts a really light bit of blue. Again, using the flat side of your sponge brush to just kind of push against the canvas and smear it down and blend it. See, it kind of gives a look of some blue sky with some clouds showing through. I, again, I put a little bit of water on my sponge brush and I'm going to pull it down into that brown a little bit. Trying not to get it too muddy. Just kind of cover that whole background. Okay, so you see I have some white showing through, some darker areas and some lighter areas. This is just our background, so it does not have to be beautiful. We just did a lot of smudging. I'm gonna rinse that guy out and get ready for the next part. So clean out your sponge brush. And we're gonna go back in with some brown. So here I have my brown sponge brush again. We are gonna use this really straight pointy edge of this uh, sponge brush and make sure he's not too too wet and I'm gonna put some brown and some black again kind of mix a medium brown color and load them up because we're gonna start to do some tree trunks okay so we picture right here in the middle of our sky, the center, this is where our uh, light is going to shine through the trees. So we want to pretend like we're kind of looking up into the tops of the trees a little bit. So our trees are going to angle kind of towards the center of our canvas. So I'm kind of just going to start on an angle for my front tree and you can give it a little wiggle as you come down. Pretend like you are, you know, Bob Ross painting some happy trees and do these little tree trunks reaching right up into the sky. See how I wiggle my brush just a little bit and I'm pulling it down towards the center just to kind of give it some some roots and we're going to do that several more times but each time the tree trunks kind of tapering down a little bit and ending before the other ones now you can put as many trees as you want they're not really going to look like trees just yet but the sacred grove has kind of these skinny, I think they're maple trees. Um, so they don't have really thick tree trunks. They are just these thin, thin kind of deciduous trees that lose their leaves and regrow them. I'm going to put a couple kind of in the background. So here we're kind of giving like, like an illusion a little bit. So your bigger trees are going to be towards the front and everything going back is going to get a little bit smaller. All right, so that's about it. Now you see, I don't have a lot of definition. I just have kind of some, 
some dark brown lines. And we're gonna switch our paint brushes here now. And I'm gonna rinse this guy out. All right, so our next paint brush is we're gonna use our little, uh, I'm gonna say he's about a half inch or so brush. And we are gonna still mix a little bit of brown. So you're gonna use your, your paint mixing skills here. And we're gonna make a few different shades of brown. So we can make a little bit of a lighter brown and a little bit of a darker, kind of a darker grayish brown for some shadow. You play around with it and decide what kind of color you like the best. If you don't love it, you can always paint over it a little bit. Okay, let me make another one over here. So you see I have a few different shades to pull from. Now your shadows will always be a darker color. And when you add some lighter highlights, we're going to mix them with some lighter colors. So we're going to see what color this turns out to be. I'm going to go in for my first, it's got a fuzzy, my first tree trunk that I did. I'm just going to make him a little bit lighter. Channel your Bob Ross. If you run out of paint, just go back in. Hopefully you still have a little bit of some wet paint in there and you can blend it with your other stuff. Okay. And the same for all of these, we're just gonna kind of go over them and give them a little bit more of a definition little bit more of a root. And feel free to just add some depth to it. So our, our light center, again, is going to be coming from this middle here. So that means that when we're adding lights and shadows, the lighter side of the trees are going to be facing towards the middle. So if I go in here with some, a little bit of white, I want too much. This side of my tree is going to be lighter. And it's best to do this when your paint is a little wet so that it blends together better. All right, so I'm going to go over here onto the, these trees. These ones are a little too dark for me, so I'm going to add some light onto the side here. I'm going to Kind of pull it out and wiggle my brush a little. I'm going to do that on all these sides. You'll see it gives a little bit of definition to your trees. So they're kind of like L's and J's a little bit with some squiggly, shaky paintbrush lines. Pay attention to how, how often I go back and get some more paint or change the color because this is what I want you to do is to play with your colors and find what you like and wiggle your brush and figure out what works best for you, what gets the look you're looking for. You can't really mess this part up. They may not look like much now, but once we get those leaves coming in here, you'll start to see them take on tree shape. See how I'm mixing a whole bunch of colors together? I'm not just sticking with one, one brown or one gray or black. 
kind of just adding in some whites and darks. Hopefully that gets a little too white for me. I'm going to water it down just a tiny bit. See, and our shadows are all going to come on this side of our trees. Now, and we don't have to have defined lines either. They can be kind of messy. They don't have to be thick with paint. Your paint can kind of fade off. Okay, let's give this guy a little bit more of a tree trunk here because he's right in the front. Okay, we got a whole bunch of browns going on here. Lots of blacks and browns and grays kind of all coming in together. Okay, so now we've got some tree trunks going on here. I'm going to rinse out my brush. This water's getting a little bit gross. Rinse it out good. Okay, before we move on to the easy part, I'm going to finish up our trees. So real quick, try and flatten out your brush a little bit so you've got a nice kind of straight, straight line here. Now you're gonna grab your paint by pressing flat and twisting your brush over to the front and to the back, to the front and to the back. Wipe off the excess so you know your brush is good and loaded with some color. And using that edge, the flat edge, we're just gonna draw in with our brush some branches. We don't need a whole lot of branches and they don't have to be super defined. So you see how they kind of fade off. That's okay. We're just gonna kind of give the idea of some tree branches going on here. We're not even gonna branch off too much into smaller branches. We're just gonna give them a few shoots coming off. I'm gonna make a little bit bigger. Okay, some darker edges right here. So you'll see I didn't give him too many branches. I'll give this guy a few more just because he's right there. Okay, so now we have what looks like a desert with a bunch of dead trees. Congratulations, you're all done. You did it. <laughs> just kidding. Let's give this guy some more life. All right, so that kind of ends our brown. We're gonna leave whatever is left on here to be able to mix with our green because this green that we have, um, it's called Christmas green and it is a little too not leafy tree top color. So we are gonna try and make it as more realistic as we can. But before we do that, let's actually use some white. And I'm gonna give myself a teeny bit more white here. <clears throat> and we are gonna be very technical. 
Load up your paintbrush with some white. And we're gonna give ourselves our light center real quick so that we know what we're going around and where, where the light is gonna shine through. So I want you to kind of do like a little bit of a white circle. It's gonna look kind of like a white orb or sun kind of in the middle of your trees here. That kind of gives us our uh, light source here. And when I painted this with the kids earlier, I used my fingers to get this guy in here. Because our tree branches are still a little bit wet, if we go too far into them, it's going to pull some brown. That's okay, but you don't want it to be pull too much brown because you don't want your light source to be tan. You want it to be pretty light. Okay. All right. So back to our sponge brush. Let's see if I can find a good one. I'm going to switch out my water here. Now, if you this little triangle that we talked about before on our sponge brush, we're going to use this and the, uh, the top uh, pointed edge for this. But first, I want you to play around with your green. So we have this really, really, really bright, bright, marchy kind of green here that I want to make a little more realistic. So I'm going to pull in some brown from my big mud puddle right here. Let's see if I can't get a little bit better of a green. Let's try it out and see. Well, I'm happy with that. So what I want you guys to do now is I want you to kind of just dot your, your brush in some different directions, kind of going in an upside down rainbow type look. You can use the side. We're just, I'm just going to give you a guide, a guideline here to follow your tree branches. I don't want it to look too much like, like sponge painting, but give yourself some green. You see how our green kind of goes in, in, in like a smiley face type shape. We're going around this light source here in the center. Because this is the background, you can do the, a little bit of green sponging in between your tree branches. You know, I went over a little bit here, but you're going to want to kind of pull your, your sponging down in between, right? kind of down into the brown here. Play around with the, the light um, and heaviness of, of pushing down on your sponge brush. You'll see that different weights that you use will give you a different... Um, pattern. This is an easy way to get some green in there too, just using that very center tip. Just pull a little bit of shades of green down into your blended areas. Again, we're not using a lot of paint and we're using really kind of light strokes. And I'm also going to kind of pull a little bit of green down here in the middle. You'll see I'm using super light pressure on, on my brush. Just pulling a little bit of green in between those tree, tree trunks here. I'm not filling it in. It's just giving us a little bit of depth. Okay, and that's all we need our sponge brush for. We're gonna go back, sorry. Okay. We're gonna go back to 
our, our little square um, headed brush. I'm gonna give myself a little bit more brown. You guys should be able to use a, your another paintbrush or a spoon if you need to add some paint to your palette or plate from your little cups. I'm gonna really see if I can get a nice, nice darker green here, maybe with a little black. Black tends to really darken stuff up, so a little bit goes a long way. That's kind of a nice dark, dark green right there. Let's start with that guy. Okay. Okay, so my brush is good and loaded up. You can see there's kind of a little bubble of paint on there. Now we don't want a ton, but you want to be able to kind of scoop it on. And we're going to use our paintbrush pretty flat and we are going to become the master of dotting. So here we go. We're just going to make some kind of leaf shapes. See how that does with the flat side of that brush. And we're going to kind of follow our upside down rainbow or smiley face type shape that we did with our sponge brush. Now here we can kind of go over the tops of our tree trunks because the leaves kind of hang down over them. You can kind of come off of your branches, but really we're just going to fill in this whole section. So this nice dark green is a good color to start off with. And your greens will change as you mix, but just get a good, good base of dark in there. This will be like the background green. Now this will be the majority of the rest of our painting. It'll just be you kind of playing around with the, the shapes that your paintbrush makes and how the pressure you use with your paintbrush or the speed um, that you touch your canvas with the shapes that it creates to make your leaves. So you'll see I can go pretty fast or I can go pretty slow and my greens will start to change. Our goal here is to kind of fill in this whole area. So the darker on the outside. Now I'm using a paper plate for this. It really works best to use a glass or a um, hard plastic plate because then your paint doesn't soak in to your palette as you're mixing and your paint will last a little bit longer. This paper plate, it kind of dries up real fast. Make sure you pull your leaves down into your brown you can do kind of in the background where you pulled down those smudgy kind of greens. It just gives it a little bit more shape. I'm going to start making a little bit of a yellow green now. A little bit of yellow, a little bit of white. Okay, if it doesn't mix in, maybe a little bit of brown. I 
leaves are so many colors. But you'll see as you start to layer that you give your painting a little bit more depth. And yes, it will be noisy. If I press down with my brush, you see it makes a little bit more of like a, a dot or covers a little bit more area than just the straight edge of the paintbrush. And that's good too if you're trying to fill in. Remember when I said we were going to be Bob Ross? Here you go. As we layer in our colors, you'll start to see your trees come alive. Remember, we're still going around our light source here. So we want everything as we come towards it to get a little bit lighter. We still want some green in here. Look how my paint is almost running out on my paintbrush, but it can still give it a little bit of color. pull some white a little closer to my green here see what color I can make some kind of like a sagey kind of green here that's pretty good see it's not all super mixed it to be one color so that's good because as I dot it in here. It's just going to pick up the other colors of the green I've already done. And we want to kind of make sure we get some good color at the top of our canvas. If you're painting on a canvas that has the wood the wood frame around the back. You might want to do the edges of that too. I actually like these flat panels because you can put them in frames a lot easier. Still doing leaves. If you turn your brush a little bit, you might be able to get some different shapes in there too. I'm just going to use a little bit of a wet brush. All right, so now let's add in a little bit of yellow. So around our sunshine pulling through, we want to add some yellow coming in from our light source again, because when the light shines through and the sun shines through the leaves, we get all of those yellow tinges of color with the green. You can also mix some yellow with some white. Get a nice kind of lime color. that up into your tops of your trees. You see some depth showing up now. And we come with this sagey color again. 
And we want to kind of come across our light source a little bit because you want to be able to see like the light is coming through those leaves. All right. We're going to go back with a sponge brush. Oops, sorry. I'm going to hit the camera. We're going to come in with our little bit of light green and some white on our sponge brush. And we are going to just dab that around again in that center. So the light's coming through, kind of spongy. Okay, so now we have our little grove here. We want to pull that sunshine down into the forest floor here. So it's gonna kind of, our little rays of sunshine, we're gonna kind of angle on a 45 and we're just gonna kind of pull real light down to a tree trunk. And pull real light down to a tree trunk. And I'm gonna use my fingers to push down on it a little bit because I don't have a lot of water on here. And I'm gonna pull it straight down. See, if you have real light touch, it's just gonna kind of lightly pull some paint. And we're just gonna do that until you feel like you've got the rays of sunshine coming through that you are happy with. Remember, this is your grove. Really lightly is all I'm doing. Now you can use the pointed edge of your sponge brush again if you want a few lighter rays coming down. So you can kind of play with this if you want them to be a little um, more smudgy, I guess. I would get it wet and kind of make it a little brighter. No, here's the technical way of doing this. I'm going to lift it up and you can even use your hands and that's going to pull some of the green through it a little bit down to your forest floor. And you see how I kind of just touched the the roots and, and the tree trunks here, we're gonna come back in and we're gonna lighten that up. You still got your wet paintbrush and you can kind of smudge a little bit that light source in the center. Tap it, dab it, finger smudge it if you want. Just be careful of the pressure you use because if you're too wet with your brushes or your fingers or whatever it's going to just get muddy and we don't really want it muddy we just want a nice 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 blend okay because i have white ish paint on here i'm just gonna get my brush a little bit wet here so that I can come back in with some light highlights for where those sun rays are kind of touching down on the floor and my tree trunks here. You can see that's kind of watery. It's totally okay. And we're gonna go back in with some green and we're gonna do our forest floor. So here we can, you see we've still got quite a bit of brown here. We can pull as much green as we want down into the, into the floor of the forest here. But I'm gonna start with going around my tree trunks and I'm just gonna add like some fallen leaves or some kind of like a pathway, I guess. 
tapping, tapping real, real light. We're just going to give our floor a little bit more depth. So this is a little too white for me, so I'm going to go and kind of mix a little bit of brown with my green. Just so I have a little bit more shadow. Now I'm just tapping my brush. You can see it's got brown kind of on one side and green on another, and that's fine. totally whatever your perception of your forest floor is going to look like. It's free reign. I still feel like it needs a little bit of shadow, so I'm just going to come in here with some dark colors. See if I can mix some darker green again. Might be time for some more paint. There we go, that's kind of nice. And everybody's painting will turn out a little different. Like I said, I painted this one three times already and they've all turned out a little different. Go in between your tree trunks. Don't paint over all your tree trunks because you want to still have them defined, even though this painting is quite a bit abstract. Just go with your feeling of how you like it here. So I'm not super happy with how light this is here. And so I'm just going to kind of pull my paintbrush up a little bit, give a little bit of a horizon line, like of where the floor of the forest blends off into the background. Okay. Now we still have our rays of light. You can see that my floor is kind of dark in sun and bright in some places. I want to bring the light shining through down to the floor also. So I'm gonna go with a light, lighter color, mixing some white with the greens I was just using. There we go, and I wanna kind of pull those sunshine rays out into the middle of my grove. So if I was down there in this setting, this would be where I would want to be where the sunshine is shining right down on me. If you paint over your lines and you feel like they're just getting too muddled, you can go back over them and define them a little bit. And I'm still tapping. I'm not doing anything but lifting my paintbrush and tapping down and seeing what color my, my paint makes on the canvas. need a little bit more of a sage color. Pot gray. Okay. 
Let's see what this looks like. Oh yeah, I like that. That's good. So I'm kind of following where my rays of sun come down onto the floor and pulling them out into that center area. But I'm keeping them kind of flat. You see that I'm kind of going straight tap, tap, tap across because I don't want... I don't want the floor of the forest to be just a bunch of kind of dots like like the trees up here. I want it to have a real like solid floor look to it. Because our light source take a little bit more white is centered kind of here in the middle. Let's keep our, our lightest colors here and have them kind of fade out darker. And you can always add dark on top of light. If you think it gets too light, just go back on top of it. Just like with your tree branches, if you feel like it's too much green up here, Take some of your white and go back in and add some lighter colors in there. Just remember to try and keep the majority of your light colors in the center. The rays of sunshine kind of covered up some of these tree branch, these tree trunks here. But overall, I think I'm pretty happy with it. Kind of want to darken this guy up just a tiny bit. I'm going to add a little bit of darker colors right down here on this corner with some of this leftover brown and gray that I gray green I have here. Just to pull in a little bit more shadow on these edges. Now, I am not being specific about the brush strokes I use or the colors that I'm using. I'm kind of just going for the lights and darks. I just want to add a little extra shadow. Play around with it and see what you like. I'm sure there are a lot of you out there who are much better artists than I am. But here is our, here is our painting of our own sacred grove. If you haven't had a chance to listen to that primary song, I highly recommend it. It is so beautiful. And I know that we've all been trying to find that, that special place that is our own sacred grove where we can feel the spirit um, that speaks to us. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope that you had a really good time. If you have any questions, you can always call me. Um, 
and I would be happy to come over and help you if you need it. But I am so glad that you were able to do this along with us and we hope you have a great night. Thank you.